just about every bushfire season, we hear tragic stories of people trapped in their cars trying to tough out the inferno. Is it the right thing to do or the wrong thing? Well, actually, science has only just recently learned what happens to a car caught in a firestorm. So Mark Horstman braves the heat to find out the do's and don'ts of survival. Just adrenaline took yeah. over and instead of thinking what I should do, I just put my foot down and accelerated and drove straight through all the orange flame. It was pitch dark and, and, and light headlights didn't do anything because of the smoke. Every fibre was just screaming, you've got to get out of here, the fire's coming. I warned my son about a bit after seven o'clock that night not to come through. He said, I'll make it. This is the last place you'd want to be in a bushfire, inside a car. Cars and bushfires are a lethal combination. Ash Wednesday, 1983. 31 of the 46 fatalities were in or near vehicles. Air Peninsula in South Australia, 2005. Tragically, nine people died. Eight of them were in or near their cars. If you find yourself trapped inside a car in a bushfire, what can you do to increase your chances of survival? Andrew Sargent from the CSIRO has been reading more coroner's reports about bushfires than he'd like. Um, it's literally an inferno. You would be getting exposed to probably about 80 times the radiant heat that you would on a nice sunny day like this. Uh, it must be horrific. Outside of the car it would be very dark. It would feel like it was raining fire. It would um, be very windy. The car would be moving a lot. The smoke would be unbearable. The temperatures would be unbearable. You'd feel plastics melting away onto your skin. Andrew's part of a team led by Justin Leonard that for the first time is putting cars to the test. Their giant gas griller simulates the radiant heat of a real bushfire. We've uh, configured here a series of burners that actually run on liquid phase LPG and have designed the nozzles in a way that they project the gas up and it burns in a very similar way to actual bushfire. They spend hours in each test car fitting what looks like a tangled mess of wires. Yeah, and if we put another one, you know, sort of from there, or another guide wire there, it should hold them in place, no worries. Surprisingly, it's a highly organised set of sensors um, where we bring uh, temperature signals in from all different parts of the car. All the data are deemed live to the scientists out of a fireproof box. From the ceiling to the floor, 50 sensors will paint a detailed heat map of the car. But heat and radiation aren't the only challenges. A melting car makes plenty of smoke and toxic gases. We have one point up here at the breathing zone of the uh, driver, and at the same time we'll sample a second point down at uh, near the floor level. Steve Brown sets up an air sampler to see what you'd be breathing if you were crouched down under a woolen blanket, as recommended by fire safety authorities. A lot of car lining materials are PVC, and PVC, when it's heated, even before it starts to ignite, will release hydrogen chloride gas, and that's a very severe irritant. Our aim is to see whether people will uh, reach a point in the car where they feel too distressed and they, they panic and jump out. Add to that a rising panic that the fuel tank may be about to explode. But after many tests, this hasn't happened once. Uh, this test, we're going to do a side-on exposure, and we're going to do it with an engine running and uh, air conditioning on. So Have you done this before? No, this is our first one with the air conditioning, so we're really interested in, uh, in how much difference it really makes. Ignition. The radiant heat from the gas jets is building gradually, just like an approaching bushfire. Three, two, one, ten kilowatts. Eight minutes into the test and we're seeing the first signs of the car overheating. Two, one, twenty kilowatts. It's when you see it melt that you realise how much plastic and rubber there is. Eleven minutes in and the simulated fire front is rolling over the car. It's peaking just above 40 kilowatts. That's 20 times the pain threshold. The exposed side bursts into flame. 
12 minutes in, and there goes the front tyre. As the fire recedes, it looks like there's smoke billowing inside the cabin. And a test. Suppression crews. The firemen start the water pump to save the instruments. Stay off the glass. As soon as it's safe, Steve Brown is sucking out samples of the cabin smoke. We've had about 200 parts per million of hydrogen chloride. That would be extremely irritating to somebody. I believe they'd want to get out of that car. Just a small burn hole in the back seat. Well, that was probably one of the most revealing tests we've had. Uh, we learned a lot about engine operation and how the aircon performed. Although the windows stopped 70% of the radiant heat getting through, the range of temperatures inside is astonishing. And we've actually got uh, peaks up around um, as high as 250, in fact, at very high in the cabin. So. Um, but if you're down low or down and low under the blanket, they're very, very tenable around 40 to 50 degrees, which is quite survivable. On the floor under the woolen blanket, you're able to survive the heat, but it's the toxic gases that could be lethal. The preliminary results seem to indicate that it's a much cooler environment for the people to be in. However, it looks like that the stirring up effect of the air conditioning may in fact mix the toxic gases around the cabin and may in fact be worse for the occupants. The best advice is don't get caught in your car in the first place. Make your decision early enough to stay or go. But sometimes that's just not possible. If you do get stuck, here's what you do. Shut the doors, shut all the windows. Turn your headlights on so people can see you. Close all the air vents. Crouching down low and covering yourself with a woolen blanket really makes a difference. And these tests show that lining up the car in a clearing, front on to the fire, and turning off the air con and fan will also help. Hopefully, it's information you'll never need. But in a land of bushfires, you never know.